Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to see how we can resolve one of the one of the most commonly seen uh, problems when we are working on a scene that we want to add some textures to it. First of all, let me show you what kind of a scene I have. If you watched the previous videos, you're going to notice it's the same scene that we use for the uh, interior lighting for, with V-Ray. Now, just made some changes. Let me show you. Um, so, all right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my entire room, right click, go object properties and in the general tab, I'm going to click this back face call. That is going to call out the back face of the polygon so I can see inside my room. Now, once I've done this, I've basically assigned different IDs to different parts of the room. So as you can see, the inner part, or let me just zoom in, the inner part here has an ID of one, the walls have ID of three, and the ceiling has ID of two. The reason for this is because I wanna apply different materials to each of the, uh, these elements. So when you go over in the material editor, I have a multi sub object with three uh, materials we have the floor walls and ceiling i have it applied here so when i render out i get basically something like this so as you can see nothing fancy it's a very very plain white room with a gray floor now Let's say we want to make this floor wooden. We, we want to use a wooden texture. So what we would do is we would probably go over and find a wooden texture that we like either on a texture site or on Google. So I have it over here. I've opened up Google and all I did was type in wood. The first one that came uh, to mind was this texture. And I'm just gonna press view image, right click, save the image, and I'm going to save it as a wood base. I'm gonna click save. This is gonna save my base. All right. Now, this is what we wanna do. I'm gonna go back to the scene, press M, go inside the floor texture. And from here, I want to go ahead and choose here go bitmap find the texture I downloaded here press open this is going to add it to the slot in order to be able to see how this thing looks like I'm gonna press over here where it says show shaded material in viewport and there we go right away I can see that I have something on the floor now the problem with this even if I render it out now it's not going to look bad. Let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to render it out. And as we can see, the wood does look natural. But the problem here is the scale that with this texture is it, it's at. Basically, if you look at it, it doesn't look right. It looks like the seams are way too big. These ridges for the wood, they don't look natural. So what we want to do is increase the tiling of this map. So we would go over here at where it says tiling. Just close this. I'm going to rotate it around so you can see it better. I'm going to go tiling and type in two by two. And this is where the first problems arise. Now, since we downloaded this image from Google and it hasn't been photoshopped to be uh, seamless so we can tile it without a problem we end up with a problem like this so let's see how we can deal with this problem all right so in order to do this we're gonna have to jump over in Photoshop so let's go ahead and open Photoshop and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the texture I downloaded and drop and drag and drop it inside my viewport just let me get this out of the way and this is what i have right now now before i start doing anything i want to make sure that i'm working on a square 
uh, size texture. So I'm going to go over to file, go click new, and I'm going to make a 2048 by 2048. I, I usually use these uh, kind of textures, like either 2K or 4K, so I can later on use it as a texture that's a number of two. All right, so go click OK. And we have this. Now, I'm going to go over and click and drag this entire texture over here. I'm going to uh, uh, copy it once, so just pr press Control J. And this is, as you can see, it's making a new layer. Just drag it down a bit. We can either use it like this, or I can press Control T, so I can enter in the edit mode, right click and flip it horizontally. And then just pull it down until it gets to the bottom, like this. Okay. Now, I want to merge these two. Just press Control E to merge the top with the bottom part. Control E. Now we have it merged. But if I like move it around, we can see that we have some of the texture that's going off screen. Just so that this this doesn't happen, I'm gonna go ahead with the Control uh, or the selection marquee. I'm gonna make a control selection on the entire screen. And again, I'm going to make a new uh, layer with what's selected by pressing Control J. There we go. Now I'm going to delete the previous layer. The reason for this was that now when I move this layer, it's basically what the only thing that's uh, seen is what's on the screen. Now we have a squared texture, but still this is not seamless. If we were to use this in our scene, we are still going to be stuck with the same problem. The way Seamless works is, uh, you can see it in Photoshop. You go over on Filter, you go Other and Offset. We offset it for 1024 by 1024. That means this entire image has been moved on, on the side by half and it's been moved upwards by half. And you can see clearly here we have two different lines that are intersecting this image. Now, this is a problem. And the reason why I chose this uh, texture is so I can show you one more trick on how you can equalize your textures in Photoshop so you don't end up with a problem like this. Now, usually when you work on a texture, the only problem that you're gonna have is your seams are not gonna be matching correctly. But in this case, we have an extra problem where the colors are not working correctly with each other and we have a big difference in color. So I'm gonna press Control Z to undo. And let's fix the issue with the colors first. So this is a neat trick and it's a really nice thing to know. All you got to do is select your layer and you need to make a copy of it. So again, control J, as you can see, now we have a copy over here. Now we open, we're going to go over to filter, going to go to the blur and we're going to average out the color. So we have an average color of this. Now take the lower layer and drag it on top of the color layer or the average layer. Here, we're gonna go over and again, we're gonna change the blending mode from normal to linear light, go over to linear light and make the opacity something like 40 or 50%, something like this. Right now, it's very, very yellow. We want to lower this, so we're going to go again over to Filter, Other, and hit it with the High Pass. Here we can use anything from uh, 50 to 150, depending on uh, what kind of uh, result you want. But I would usually run around either 50 or 100, so I'm going to go with 50 this time and press OK. And now all we got to do is press again Control E to merge it down. I'm going to delete this background 
because I don't need it. And there we go. Now we have a normalized layer. So now if we go over to other and offset this for 1025 by 1024 by 1024, we can see that we no longer have that issue with the color. It's all the same color. Now, the only thing we need to fix is this seam in the middle, but that's a very quick fix with the clone stamp. So you just select a piece of uh, on the side. Just make sure that it doesn't have try to keep it so it doesn't look like it's all broken up. Nope, we don't want to use this. As long as this seam in the middle is not visible, we're great. So now, if we offset it again, we no longer are seeing any seams. So with this, we have basically made a seamless texture that has been equalized with the color. So all I'm going to go over and save as. And here, I'm going to make it a JPEG and call it uh, wood seamless. Press save. Okay. With this, we've basically made a seamless texture. So before I jump over back to Max, I'm going to go over and press Control U. This is going to desaturate this. Actually, Control Shift and U. This is going to desaturate my um, image here. I'm going to save this JPEG would seamless, but instead of seamless, I'm just going to call it bump. And now I'm going to press control M or not. Okay. Then we're going to go over to curves and with the curves, I'm going to make something like this. All right. And this I'm going to save up as a specular map. So wood specular save. All right. With this, we have the two maps or actually the three maps that we can use back in our scene in 3ds max. So let's jump back and see how we can use these. All right. So back to max again. Now I'm simply going to take the image that I used here, the previous from the previous one, and I'm going to change it with the one we made the seamless. This is what I'm actually doing on the other screen. I'm just going to pull the seamless over to the wood base. I'm going to put it aside again so it does it's not in the way. And now if we take a look at our scene, we can see that even though we are tiling this, we have no more issues on the ground. Even if we were like three here, you see that the image is starting to get narrower, but we see no it. There we go, like two and three. Let's see how this looks when we render it out. Let's render production. And there we go. This is what we get with this texture that we just made in Photoshop. So it's totally seamless and it's looking great. So let's just give it an extra bit of realism with the two extra maps that we made with the bump map and the specular map. I'm going to go over. Let me just go ahead and hide. We have our teapot over here, which we're just going to use it so we can populate the scene a bit. It doesn't look so empty. So I'm going to take up the bump map that we made and I'm going to pull it over in the bump slot over here and pull the specular over in the reflect. All right. So let's simply try with a higher value, let's say 60 for the bump. And let's hit one render and see what happens here. 
All right. Once I press the render button, I actually noticed an issue, but I didn't want to stop the rendering because I want to show you how to resolve this issue as well or make sure you don't make that uh, mistake. What I actually did was when I placed the specular in the bump map, I didn't change the tiling settings. So this is, as you can see, the diffuse has a tiling of two and three, while my wood specular, even though it's the same map, it doesn't have the same tiling. So make sure you use the same tiling for your spec map and your bump map. So two and three. And now if we were to make one more render, it's going to reflect the actual map that we use. But let's just go ahead and see it one more time. And there we go. Now our floor looks like it's been lacquered and it's having some nice realistic um, reflections that are governed by our specular map and our bump map. Now the thing is that you can further improve this by playing around with the reflection values over here. So you can just go over here, uh, decrease the glossiness to something like 0 0.9 or 85 or depending on what you want to obtain, what kind of result you want to get. If this reflection is too strong, you're not going to go over in the reflect color to decrease it, but you would go over here and just decrease the this 100%. You're going to make something like 80. That means it's going to uh, take 80% of the strength of this map. So let's just go ahead and render one more time. And there we go we get nice diffused reflections and the entire room is starting to look nice and realistic. So that was it for this uh, video. We saw how we can take a texture from the internet and then how we can go about make it seamless and in the process even how to equalize the color disbalance if it's present on our texture. So I hope you guys liked this video and also you managed to learn something new. And if you'd like me to make more, then like, subscribe, comment, and share it around so it can reach more people. So for now, take care, see you in the next video.